What's going on, fish heads? Jen from Jekyll Baits, and it's time for another spray session. Now, today we're going to be working with depth and layering. You guys have been asking me and asking me for this. I have visited this subject. It's been a couple of years, I think, uh, on a couple of jerk baits, and it they were on the um, the one twenties, the SPs. One was from Schultz, one was from Dinger, and then I did a comparison on both of them after that. So I can link those descriptions below. But today, you guys have really been asking me on how I spray the kamikaze bug and really adding in that depth and making it look like it's just popping off of the bait. So that's what we're going to cover today. Let's make something cool. You see I've got these little BD200s. I've got two of them and then I have two, uh, I've got a Sixth Sense and a Mystery Tackle Box Grunt here. So we're going to cover all four of those. We're going to do them all. It's the same pattern. Couple of differences. These are already uh, painted and they've got a little bit of chrome on them so I might play into that on one or both of these and maybe keep it a little bit more transparent. Obviously we're going to have to cover the top of this bait over um, with some white on this Sixth Sense. Uh, this we may or may not. The eyes have been removed on both of them. I've got everything taped off. On the clear baits, we're just going to add uh, some opaque white to get a base because you really want those colors to shine through. This is a very stained water autumn fall bait. I'm excited to make it for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get the paint in the chamber and get started. The first thing that we're going to do is add that opaque white into these clear BD200s. These are from Dinger and they are that classic Fandit 200 series. These are mid diving and these are going actually, actually these are going out to Greg Dudley and he is the founder of Bass Baits by and Barter. You can find that online on Facebook. So we're going to hook him up with a couple of these. He's asked for them. Now he is out in the southwest so he deals with a lot of clear water but this is a, just a really good pattern for him as well. So I'm certainly happy to make that happen for him. Just want to cover everything. Get a fairly thick layer. And the reason that yeah, a lot of people ask me over a period of time, why do we cover baits at all with white? Well, basically white is going to make whatever color you put on top of this a much brighter, richer color. So anytime you're dealing with a blank, starting out with a blank, and you want to make sure that you have the brightest, most accurate colors that represent the pattern that you're making, you want to go ahead and put on that white opaque base. You can also use black. Black works very well uh, also. Depends on the pattern that you're laying down. A lot of times I'll do black for veining underneath if I'm doing a layer or wrap mesh. And we are going to be working with a mesh today, but we're going to be using, uh, well, you'll see how it comes, we'll see how it turns out. Um, we're going to be using our base as red, but we want that really bright, bright red and bright fluorescent as our split tone layering underneath. Now, especially if you're working with reds against a white opaque background. You want to clean your chamber out really, really good because what will happen, red is a very defined color and you want that to, to stay red, red, true red. White is going to turn it pink and it's not at all the desired effect that you want for this bait. Although it could be pretty cool, I could see this working pretty well if you have like a hot pink base if you're doing walleye colors. Making sure the chamber is well cleaned in between your opaque white and whatever your next layer is on this, which is going to be a red and, and fluorescent yellow. You also want to make sure that your heat set is good too because the same rule applies. If you have wet white on here, you're going to end up with this strange pink. It's not going to convey the color the way you want it to convey. So heat set everything in between this. We definitely have to heat set again before we get on our mesh layers. So we're going to do our, our bases here. Now I'm going to start out with this fluorescent red instead of yellow because I have very little of it left so I need to make sure that it's going to cover all four of these baits that I'm doing. So I'm, this is going to be the top of this. And then we can add in some iridescent which is going to give it a little bit of a, a glitter property and color shifting. But I want this very well laid out. 
had a little hiccup in there. I probably have a tiny clog that I'll have to attend to, but hopefully I can get through this session without having to deal with it. A lot of times with clogs, they will pass through as you're spraying, especially if you're spraying high, and I'm up around 45 just to get this on. The biggest thing, if you are spraying high pressure and you're not used to it, spray evenly, spray one and stop, and one and stop, and always use your, if you're brand new to airbrushing, use your forefinger as a trigger. Don't try and, and brush with your thumb. If you do do that, and you've been doing it for a while and it works for you, that's cool, but it's just trigger. Just think of a squeeze trigger on a pistol or a rifle. Same principle, it's just on top and not here. And I should probably get this covered in one more, I've got like maybe a quarter of a chamber, a fifth of a chamber in here. And I'm going a little bit more than half down the side. Uh, I tried doing some fluorescent orange and I didn't like the way that looked as much as I like this fluorescent red. The red is uh, it's a little bit more poppy as far as how the other colors play off of it. it really offsets your other colors, which are going to be your mesh layers, your depth. Chamber is good and cleaned out and I have loaded fluorescent yellow. I've got about a third of a chamber full on this. Same pressure, right around 40, 45. It's real high pressure. But one of the things that you can do to kind of offset that is just very lightly pull back on the trigger. You don't need to go to town with this thing. I mean, I guess you could take this thing into town, but it's probably not necessary. But just real light, light blasts. And then you can see that I'm doing one, stopping, doing one, stopping, just in technique. And that's gonna help blend this. There we go. Love that blend, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to finish these two while that's running. And don't forget, if you guys have an air compressor like this California Air Tools that you see down there, make sure you're cleaning it. And uh, there's a little nozzle at the bottom, a little vent valve, because water, little water moisture will build up in these things. So you want to be draining that every couple of days depending on how many hours you're using it. I let these set off camera for about 20 additional minutes only because I have a couple layers on here already and I really wanted to make sure there was nothing that was still tacky or moist underneath because when you put the mesh on especially if you clamp it down real tight it has a tendency to really dig into that. I, I want to make sure that when we pull that off it doesn't pull any of the paint. Now we're going to start with this grunt and then work on to the sixth sense flat side here. I've got white loaded back into the chamber because that's going to again add the depth that we want and we're going to shoot this at a 90 degree angle and we're just going to do some light shades here. Go ahead and cover that whole thing back. Now that we have our white in I'm going to add just a little bit of Maui blue and here's where we start angling. You'll notice that I'm, I'm laying this bait down and shooting over the sides of it. Shooting across the back. The same thing with this. Come back and add just a little bit more of that. Wrong bait. Gotta have the right bait. Now we're going to come in with some green. 
And that's where the layering really starts to build. We're going to start with some light green. I like the, uh, the tropical. It's a fun color. It's not too dark. We are going to end with a little bit darker of a shade. And we're going to come at the same angle. But we're not going to cover the entire bait like we did with the blue. We're just going to add some random spots in here and do the same thing on the other bait. Stay working at the same angle. I'm going to come back with my white. Why, you say? We're going to go from, we've been working from the forward part of the bait, from the nose back towards the tail. We're going to point the tail towards us now and we're going to shoot backwards. And there's your depth. And do the same thing from the tail forward. Adds a whole new dynamic. And now for my next trick, we're going to come back with some moss green. And now we're going to go back towards the nose. The only time that we're working reverse is with that white. So we flip it back. Now the nose is pointing at us again. Whereas on the white, we had the tail pointing at us. And once that's heat set, then we're going to come back with our darkest, which is this black magenta. And we're going to stay at the same angle and then just give a real nice dusting across the top and the back and the sides. Leave that like it is. Add just a little bit of cleaning solution into the chamber. Let that soak through. Pull these off. Go ahead and pull this off here. Now let's see what we got. But that, folks, is a whole lot of depth. And you can see how the white did shooting from the back. For the eyes, I, I really want to offset, and I've got, I've got a couple of choices, but what I'm really digging here, since I do have a little bit of blue in this bait, either these dark blue here or the blue-green, although eh, you can almost find that in another walleye bait, so I think I'm going to go dark blue on this just to finish this off. These are Jetson Lure eyes. Just lay that in. Let it get all happy. And lay the other side in and really show off what we've done. And you can, oh, you can see so much depth in this bait. Really turned out well. What a great, great walleye pattern. Yes, indeed, let's show you the grunt. I don't have the eyes on that yet. I'll use five mil on that. These are six millimeter eyes for this flat side. But again, just a great portrayal of depth. Good stuff. I'm choosing these blue azers in five millimeter. I really like the way the blue offsets on this bait. Always angle it and your pen will write very smooth if you do. And there we have it. And just like normal, when it's dry, we'll show you the end result in the outro. I've sprayed both of these BD200s now and I've dabbed on just a little bit of white paint because they don't have 3D eye sockets, so you have to kind of add the eyes in. 
So pretty much all you have to do there is just on a Q-tip, just dab a little bit of white. And then I'm probably going to come back with fluorescent yellow and finish that off just so it pops a little bit more. But I sprayed these two in the exact same manner as I sprayed the first two baits with one difference. It's the thickness of the mesh. This is older mesh that I used on the first two baits. And you can see that there's a lot less um, daylight in between both of these and this one comparatively to the new mesh. And that basically beauties in the eye of the beholder. If you want more of a veining effect, do it this way and use brand new mesh. And if you want more of a detailed depth type deal, like what we have here, then I would recommend using older stuff. They both have the same effect. They both have the exact same colors. For me, for myself, I really like this style better because I like a little bit more contrast and a little bit less of the dark because I, th I think the depth just really is, mm, it's perfect the way it needs to be on these two. But if you want more of that spider web veining effect and you still get the depth because it's still in there, the exact same colors are there, then use new mesh. That's pretty much it for me, folks. Thanks for hanging out today. The next one we're doing is going to be those Jackal re-ranges, and I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day. Happy casting.